Which upper body strength training weightlifting exercises should you modify, skip for now, or avoid in the first place when you have a tennis elbow injury? This is Alan Willett, Tennis Elbow Classroom. And I'm going to start off with some general thoughts on exercising with tennis elbow. Then I'll cover the barbells versus dumbbells question, followed by the basic kinds of exercise to avoid, and then get into which specific upper body exercises you should skip or modify. So let's begin with some preliminary questions. Should you be doing upper body strength training exercises when you have tennis elbow in the first place? And there should be a link to my video on that right here. Uh, you can wa watch that first or after this video. Uh, is this the right time for you to be doing tennis elbow specific rehab exercises that target your wrist extensor muscles? And could you be making the mistake of starting those too soon? Also uh, have a video and article on that here. And uh, perhaps if you really want to cover all the basics, what are the goals of exercise when you have, you know, when it comes to tennis elbow rehab? And these are not easy questions with simple answers, but if you do decide it's right for you to keep doing upper body strength training exercises, then be careful and follow these basic rules. Be sure to warm up first with lots of cardio. Use less weight and do fewer reps per, per exercise than you would normally. Most importantly, stop doing the exercise if it, if it starts to hurt because it may not matter what, which exercises you do at all if you're not careful and you don't follow these basic rules. Now with that in mind, uh, what about barbells versus dumbbells and uh, what about kettlebells? There's one school of thought that says use barbells rather than dumbbells, these are dumbbells, uh, when you have tennis elbow. You know, part of the reason it seems to be that if you have a dumbbell in each hand, uh, rather than if you have, yeah, if you have a dumbbell in each hand rather than, you know, one bar in both hands to do, like, say, a bicep curl, it will require your wrist muscles, you know, to do more stabilizing in the process and work harder, which, you know, apparently is to be avoided in this view. You know, perhaps that's the right way to look at it, uh, but then again, I think it may depend on what stage you're at in your recovery. Personal trainers and uh, exercise specialists, please feel free to chime in on this. I tend to think if you're already doing tennis elbow specific rehab exercises that target your wrist extensor muscle group directly, you know, targeting, targeting these guys, um, then why would you avoid challenging the same muscles by asking them to stabilize your wrist as you use dumbbells to work out other muscles like your biceps, triceps, or pecs? On the other hand, if you're not doing those wrist extensor mu muscle isolating rehab exercises yet and you're holding off on them, but you're still working out doing other upper body strength training stuff, then I could see how it might make sense to you know avoid those those uh, th avoid challenging those wrist extensor muscles you know for you know challenge them less for a while, and to use a bar or a barbell instead of a dumbbell in each hand. Still, I also see the reason in not having a barbell or a fixed bar for a couple of reasons. The main one being that you'll always favor your weaker side when you're using a barbell or a fixed bar in both hands on a cable. Now, it's unavoidable. I mean, the stronger side will compensate for the weaker side through the bar. Now, is that a good thing when you have tennis elbow? Perhaps if your injury's on your weaker side, it would make sense to favor it in the short term as your injury heals. But what if your injury's on your stronger side? You know, maybe your stronger side's already compensating, you know, overworked, for, compensating for your weaker side. Now, it's worth thinking about anyway. Another factor is you can always, almost always lift more weight with a barbell than you can with dumbbells. And you know, that's not a good thing when you have tennis elbow. Overall, you know, I, I gotta say, I think it's one of the less important factors, but still worth considering. You know, I, I kind of favor, lean in favor of dumbbells and away from the barbell, single bar and a cable, except for say, lap pull downs or something like that, which are normally done with a single bar. Okay, so what about kettlebells? Uh, I'd stay away from those if, if I were you. For most of the more complex exercises that you do with them, they're just way too wrist and forearm intensive. Still, bottom line, I think it's much more important that you warm up first, you do fewer sets, you lose less, yes, <laughs> you lose less weight, and uh, you stop if it hurts, as I said earlier. And uh, I, I think it also matters more which exercises you do, which we're about to get, we're about to cover. Starting with the basic general types of exercise, you may want to modify or avoid. First are what I call all or nothing exercises. The prime examples being push-ups, pull-ups, chin-ups, and dips. Uh, when you have an injury like tennis elbow, it's essential to be able to vary the amount of weight or resistance. Potentially in the middle of a set, 
and to be able to uh, you, you know, use less weight than you normally use in the first place. The problem with push-ups, pull-ups, and dips is that you can't vary the amount of weight, you know, only the amount of reps, because normally it's your full body weight, thus all or nothing. Now sure, if you have access to one of those assisted pull-up dip machines at your gym where you stand on this platform that takes some or most of your body weight off, then it's no longer all or nothing. Now with push-ups, you could do them with your knees on the floor if that's enough of a decrease in weight, you know, okay, although that's still a fixed amount of weight you can't really reduce any further if you need to, and it really isn't good form at all. You know, better yet, if you really feel the need to continue with push-ups, try doing them on an incline if you can, maybe at a 45 degree angle, especially if you can use some kind of bar like the one in the, in the press and squat machine at the gym. You'll have the added benefit of being able to keep your wrists in a, in a more neutral position as well like this rather than having them fully flexed and like you're doing a regular push-up on the floor. You know, even better, skip the push-ups for a while and uh, do the plank exercise and, you know, light bench press with a barbell or dumbbells instead. Okay, next are what I call long lever exercises. These exercises which are done with your arms straight and your elbows fully or mostly extended, they put a lot of load on your wrist extensor muscles, um, the tennis elbow muscle group. We'll get to some specific examples shortly, but I think it's important to cover this principle first. They're inherently more challenging because with a longer lever, uh, it's longest with your arm straight, the weight either in and either begins or ends held at maximum distance from your body. And since the elbow remains essentially locked for most of these, instead of a multi-joint exercise where your shoulder and elbow are opening and closing, let's say in a lat pull down, in a row, or in a chest press, th these are more isolating and challenging to the shoulder because you know, you've got, you got this increased need for stabilization with the longer lever that needs more counterbalancing and stability control. And third in this group are the shoulder stability challenging exercises. It's kind of another class that raises the bar to another level, so to speak, although none of these are actually involve a bar. TRX is the most popular example of this that I know of. These exercises require very high levels of stabilization. They challenge your, the stability of your core, your abs, your shoulders, you know, and if you don't have enough, especially in your shoulders, in this case, you'll invariably compensate with your forearm muscles and probably your upper arm muscles as well. Novices also tend to hold the handles, you know, in a, in a death grip, you know, which is about the last thing you need when you have tennis elbow. If you haven't been doing this kind of exercise, uh, don't even think about starting until your entry is a distant memory. If you have been doing them already, uh, I think it would be wise to stop until your elbow's better. I don't, I don't mean to knock this kind of exercise though. This is great stuff. I mean, really challenging and it's getting popular for good reasons. I'm, I'm starting to do some at the gym myself. But I'm also hearing from some of my student members that they actually got their tennis elbow from doing this kind of exercise. So, you know, just be careful. And uh, if and when you start, you know, ease into it. Now, another example of this is Pilates done on a reform machine, reformer machine. And, uh, you know, I think that's also a great exercise, but I, I would avoid the straight arm exercises uh, for a while, especially those arm circles, if I were you. And now finally we come to the specific upper body exercises you should modify or avoid completely. Now first is the uh, avoid the anterior and lateral raises for the deltoid muscles on your shoulders. The lateral raise can be done with your elbows fully extended and straight which is more challenging, or they can be done with the elbow flexed to varying degrees, often at 90, uh, which is less difficult. The more the elbow's flexed, uh, bent, you know, the less load there is on the wrist extensors, and conversely, the more extended or straightened uh, your elbow is, the greater the load. But even in the flexed elbow position at 90 degrees, your palms face the floor at the top of the motion where the resistance is greatest. This puts the maximum load and stress on your wrist extensors because the back side of your wrist is facing the ceiling. You know, to attempt to modify your wrist position with dumbbells, it seems unnatural, at least to me, and I don't think it makes much sense to do it with extended elbows in a neutral wrist position with thumbs pointed up. Now, although I'm not a big fan of most exercise machines, you can modify the exercise in a gym setting by using the deltoid machine because you don't need to grip anything, usually you know, and you press against pads with your upper arm or, or forearm, you know. And uh, also the anterior, the forward raise, which is usually done with elbows fully extended in front of your body, 
can be done with a neutral wrist position, but they're still too challenging to the wrist extensors. So just skip these, knowing that if you can do some bench or overhead presses, you'll get, you'll get some anterior deltoid action from these, even though they don't isolate it. There are also uh, posterior deltoid. There's a posterior deltoid exercise, which I'm a, I'm a huge fan of in general. Uh, it's usually done with one arm and one knee supported on a flat workout bench, so your trunk is parallel with the floor. Although this exercise is, is less challenging to the wrist extensor muscles involved in tennis or golfer's elbow, it still might be a good idea to avoid it in the early stages of your recovery. I'd suggest doing the classic bent over row for your posterior deltoid as a modification, even though it doesn't isolate it. And then as you start making progress in your recovery, I'd add the posterior deltoid exercise back first, followed by the anterior deltoid raise, and then I would bring in the lateral deltoid last. Okay, now bicep curls, you know, reverse bicep curls is going to be the, the, the culprit here. But the bicep curl has quite a number of variations. You know, some tennis double sufferers have no trouble with some of these variations, and uh, they're going to you know, find others troublesome. And uh, here they are starting with the least challenging to the most challenging to your wrist extensors. The palm up grip with a bar, whether it's with a barbell or a bar and a cable. Next comes the palm up grip with dumbbells in each hand. And then hammer curls with dumbbells. Supination curls. That's what I call them because you supinate your wrist as you, as you curl. And then reverse curls with the palm down grip with either a, a bar or barbells. And definitely avoid these reverse curls when you have tennis elbow. The reason being that this palm down grip, in, your, in this grip, your wrist extensors are under a huge load. You know, I've come across more than one weightlifter who got their tennis elbow from doing these. Not that they're inherently negative and to be avoided indefinitely, they're just simply too challenging to the wrist extensor muscles, you know, until, until you've fully recovered. Uh, next are upright rows. You know, if you're doing these exercises, my advice would be to stop them. You know, stop this one. Not just while you have tennis elbow in this case, but from now on forever. Unless you're a very serious bodybuilder and you understand the risks. It's really, they're really, it's really terrible biomechanically because it just so forcefully compresses your AC joint over and over and really serves no purpose that can't be achieved with other exercises like regular rows and anterior deltoid raises. But for the purposes of tennis elbow, it's not ideal for the same reasons as reverse curls. Very, very heavy load on your wrist extensor muscles. And finally, we have cable exercises, or you know, at least certain ones. These exercises involve a weight stack with cables that run through adjustable arms and pulleys. You can attach handles and various other things to the hooks on the end of the cables, you know, and they're great. Uh, you can do dozens of different exercises with these things. Uh, you got pec flies, and you got lat pull downs, and triceps extensions, and bicep curls, most of which are fine. The riskiest ones, not already covered above, would be the, this, this, this thing, I don't know what it's called, I'm going to call it the crossover lateral raise and shoulder extension. You basically start with arms crossed over each other, over your lower body, and then you go into like this X position with arms over your head. Also, the ones that mimic a golf swing, often called wood chop, involving a lot of torso rotation and arms held mostly or fully extended and static, which you, you just want to avoid. Since many of these exercises uh, challenge your core and, and your shoulder stability a lot, a lot more than dumbbells and barbells do, you, you know, you might be better off holding off on these altogether because you'll, you know, invariably compensate for your core weakness out at your extremities, in this case, your arms. So, those are all the usual suspects in my mind. If you're working out with tennis elbow and you have a question about a particular exercise, feel free to ask it below. If you're a personal trainer and you have anything to add, please drop a comment. Love to hear it. Are there any other exercises I should include? You know, ones you may have already learned the hard way that, you know, should be avoided. You know, I, I can't add them to the video but uh, at this point, but I can easily add them to the article. And on that note, you'll find the post, the podcast, and this video at TennisSembleClassroom.com, along with many other articles and videos. This is Alan, your Tennis Tutor.